and you're going to just live with it. Whether you like your health care, whether you like the insurance you have or not, you lose it. And you're going to get the same health care that I get. Which, quite honestly, is very unfair to you. You're 20, I'm 51. You don't need my health care. I don't need your health care. You need less health care than I do. Why should we pay the same thing? I do not need an OBGYN. I would be paying for it. You don't need a prostate exam. You're going to pay for it. Elderly people are not going to have children. And I'm not talking about someone who's 40. I'm talking about someone who's 60, 70, 80 years old. They do not need prenatal care. They're going to pay for it. Your premiums are going to go up. Your choices are going down. Your freedom is being removed again. There is a pattern here. There is a system here. And that pattern, that system says, do what we say because we're the government and you, quite honestly, are too stupid to make decisions for yourself. Because if they didn't believe that, wouldn't they let you make a choice? Who benefits from all this? Criminals aren't being hurt by the fact that they want to have gun storage lockers because they're going to say, oh, you've got to have a background check because the police are going to knock on my door at five in the morning and try and take my property if, if I have it. That's not stopping a criminal. The crackhead down the street is not being affected by this. The crackhead down the street doesn't care. Matter of fact, they're probably happy that everyone's focusing on me, so they didn't go and keep doing the crime that they were doing. That doesn't make anyone safer. 17 states have red flag laws. Has anyone heard of a major drop in gun violence anywhere? It's been, if I remember correctly, nine years for Illinois to have red flag laws. Have you heard about the reduction of murders in Chicago? They have every single law that has been promoted to prevent crime or is told that's going to protect you. The biggest restrictions on guns in the nation. They got everything, including red flag laws. Do you know how many people died so far this year? Last time I checked, about a month ago, it was 291 people. They have more people die in one weekend than most mass shootings. In one weekend. And that's every weekend. Usually double to triple during the summer. That's insane. So I, let's, I'm trying to put this into a perspective. And the perspective is very clear. Look at it from the bigger picture. Step back on this. And look at this. We're seeing over and over again. You're being fed a very strong message as to you going forward that you're not to complain. You're not to voice your opinion. That if you do, you're going to be ostracized. If you mention that you're a conservative, a Republican, anything but a loyal socialist Democrat, that you are the problem and that your freedoms are at the whim and will of somebody that got elected two, three, four decades ago. And that you are meaningless because you're interchangeable. You're white, not every, you're a straight white male, you're interchangeable. I'm a straight black male, interchangeable. The fact that I'm conservative, the fact that I speak Russian, the fact that I've worked in sales for 30 years, the fact that I own a business, None of that has any influence on who I am. No, I'm a black, straight male. That's it. That's the box I check. And therefore, I'm supposed to vote for Cory Booker because he's a straight black male. That's stupid, right? Why would that logic make any sense? If I told you that because you're a straight white male, you have to vote for Beto O'Rourke. You don't get a choice. You don't get to pick anyone else. <laughs> 
you're a woman, you have to vote for Elizabeth Warren. But if you were black, you have to vote for Kamala Harris. If I told you that, I'm pretty sure you'd say, you know what? You can stick it where the sun don't shine. And you should. How dare anyone tell you what your choice is supposed to be? Just because you look like you're this. Or because you say you declare you're whatever. Why should they take away your freedom and your choice? Because they've said that they can over and over and over again. When I look at the way progressives and socialist Democrats look at you, when I look at the media and how it refers to you, there's a very famous example of what they're talking about. The youth of today are Pavlovian subjects. There is no difference between the dog and the bell and social media and you. The process by which they're getting you to react, red flag laws, healthcare, vaping, anything else where they get to say, we know the answer, you don't, you're too dumb, do what we say, or else. And ultimately, that always leads to the same path. Anyone have an idea where that path goes to? We have a real world example I can show you right now. Venezuela, four years ago, productive, making money, became socialist, three years ago, got rid of the rights for individuals to have guns, became socialist. Two years ago, the government started killing its own people. They now have killed over 5,000 people that we can confirm. People are starving, measles, up, mumps, up, spreading into the countries surrounding it. And people are trying to escape the country. And they're coming here without vaccinations en masse because they can't stand not having freedom. And the idea of making a 3,000 mile trek, sometimes with a child, with no guarantee of food, clothing, shelter, the ability to protect themselves from being raped or used as sex slaves, that's all worth it to walk into this country, get arrested and thrown in a jail because it's better than being where they were. But by the way, America sucks, so, you know, too bad for you. 20 million people came here illegally. Over a million people come every year trying to get into this country. Going into this country as sex slaves, sweatshop workers, willing to have no rights whatsoever, not second class citizens, non-citizens, no class, hiding in the shadows. And they want that so bad because it's better than where they were. By the way, if you're wondering where did I get those stats from about Venezuela, who? World Health Organization, CDC, also the New York Times. Yes? Have you accounted for the citizens who are not socialists? Huh? Um, There's some people in the United States that are not truly socialists. What do you say to them? Oh, yeah, that's the argument that, well, we've never seen socialism yet. It doesn't exist yet. Right, and I've never seen a wheel before. We're just waiting to make a new wheel. It's going to be more improved. It's going to roll better. It's a circle. People say that because they need a way to energize you. Because if you say every example of socialism in the world has always failed, the question is how much time? If you say that, no one's going to want it. If, you, if I say to you, Every example of socialism in the world has led to massive massacres over and over again of that country's own people. No one would want it. So when they say, oh, well, we've got a better plan. Okay, does that plan mean that there's going to be a small group of people who are going to control everyone else? The answer is yes, that's socialism. Sorry, I don't like that. Are you going to be denied, denied the rights to be able to speak freely and to be able to protect yourself? If you say yes, that's socialism. I am against that. 
If you tell me that we're all going to be equal, I'm against that. And that's not a bad thing. No one here is equal to me. That means I'm not equal to you either. And you shouldn't be. I would feel very bad for you. I would feel worse for me to be each of you. You know why? I'm 50, you're in your 20s. You have a future going on. I'm dealing with the future I created. Why should you be trapped in my life? Why should I get paid what you get paid? I've got over 30 years of experience. I speak four languages. I've been in the military. I've owned four businesses. Should I get paid what you get paid? Conversely, is there anything that should stop you from going out, build your own business, and get a billion dollars tomorrow? No. But what is, what are you being told? Socialism is the answer. The Democratic National Committee Chairman, Tom Perez, has said, the future of America and the Democratic Party is Democratic Socialism, as identified by Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez and Bernie Sanders. And under that principle, you are all exactly the same. You all deserve the same thing. You get no benefit for being different, for working harder, for being an individual. You are just the masses, led by the leadership. And you get nothing for it. Now a lot of people say, Mike, you just can't possibly know that. I lived a year and a half in Moscow. Does anyone in any history classes, has anyone ever heard about the coup attempt in Moscow in 91? I know you heard about John. <laughs> you have. What do you know about? Well, I took a Russian culture class when I was in junior college, and it was, didn't they attack a, uh, like a TV radio station? It was like a terrorist attachment. Terrorist group. No, that was after. That was after. In 91, Boris Yeltsin was trying to move the Soviet Union, which no longer exists now. It's now the CIS, Confederacy of Independent States. But before that, it was the Soviet Union, the second largest organization of socialists in the world. And they were there, and he was trying to bring it more modern, more Western, giving some diversity so people can make money. And the old liners, the hard liners, which includes Putin, as a member of the KGB, said they hated that idea. They really didn't like that. Because they enjoyed the opportunity to have an election where you could choose a dead guy or the Communist Party candidate. Those are your choices. Dead guy, candidate, who's alive. That's it, and he has to be a communist, and there you go. And they like that system. So they tried to take over the government, shut down Moscow. It was really terrifying. I was there. I lived there. I watched tanks roll down the street. I watched the Russian people stand up and stand in front of those tanks. And we were being threatened with being thrown in gulags. I lived in Russia for a year and a half throughout that process, before and after. And the big difference about living in a country, I was there every day, 24 hours, a year and a half. You don't get the tour. I bought food with everyone. I went to the stores with everyone. I got to see the stores closed for 28 out of 30 days. I got to see the bread lines. I got to see the longest line I have ever seen in McDonald's, in fact, in the world. Do you know how long the line was to get into McDonald's? By the way, there was only one. It was in Moscow, a quarter mile away from the Kremlin, two miles away from my house while I was living in Russia. Do you know how long the line was? Guess. Did it go past your house? It was, no, not quite that long. Okay. Let's put it in terms of how many hours would it take? If you were the last person on the line, how many hours would it take you to get into the McDonald's? Yes, I'm talking in terms of hours. Eight. Yes, the line is that long. 
to go to McDonald's and get a Big Mac. How many McDonald's do we have here? In this city alone, we got what, five? At least. At least. This was a luxury. This is where the path always leads. You have nothing. <laughs> now I'm opening this up, and again, this is interactive, guys, and I'm loving that you're asking questions. But let me start with this. Does it make sense? Is what I'm saying, does it make sense? Do you see the connection there? You don't have to agree with it, but does it make sense? Do you see it? Does anyone disagree with it? About anything I've said so far? That's a surprise. There's usually at least one person. <laughs> I'll play devil's advocate. Well, let's, let me ask, well, actually, let me do this. You guys tell me. What are you thinking right now? You go last, John. Come on. Uh, Come on. Yeah. Jesus, I went to Cuba for mm -hmm. uh, like three or four days. Yeah. Um, and like, it was like really, the devastation, it was really sad. Like, I saw the kids go through the garbage cans, go through the houses were falling apart, the infrastructure was falling apart. And there's like, Yeah. And, and they only have one option for voting the Communist Party. Mm -hmm. And um, they don't even consider themselves communists, they consider themselves Socialist Party. Mm -hmm. And um, they only make $20, their wage is about $20 a month. Everyone gets paid that. And yeah, that's. See, and that's one of the reasons why I'm expecting a red flag law against that, that action to be put against me. Because there's a difference between, and I hope you, you've caught this. I don't consider Democrats progressives or Democratic socialists. They're different groups. As a matter of fact, if you ask them, you go and ask a member of Antifa if they'll talk to you. Uh, if you ask a member of Citizen Action, a member of Progressive Leaders of Tomorrow, if they will talk to you, and you ask them, are you a Democrat? They will tell you immediately, no, they are not. They don't believe in democracy. They are not Democrats. So there is a big difference. I'm expecting one of them to eventually try and have a red flag action made against me. Because I keep pointing out something that's very important. Besides all the things we've been talking about, every single socialist nation you can point to, the day that they become socialist, take a snapshot. Go to the future, I don't care how far in the future, that country is at that moment. Cuba's stuck. Russia, stuck, China, North Korea, Venezuela, name this country that has gone socialist. They freeze in time. And the people can't advance because what would I start with this? Choice. Make the mistakes, have the freedom to choose, advance. When you take that away, everything stagnates. Go ahead. Yeah, I'd, I'm interested in what your thoughts would be on you know, the Scandinavian countries that they're starting to point to as being socialist when they're really kind of attached to free market economies anyway, so it doesn't really... Well, that's because people like to play with the words. Yeah. What is a socialist? You know, do you know what a socialism is? It's socialism is... I was just having an argument on Twitter with uh, Indivisible New York, which is, again, another progressive group. You ever notice something? All these different progressive groups, they all have a lot of names. If you ever look at the leadership, it's the exact same people in every single one of the groups. They're all the same. In Binghamton, in Broome County, you can look around. People who are citizen action or people who are progressive leaders of tomorrow or the people who are indivisible in New York, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. They're all the same people. But they sound like they're really big because they got a lot of names. Same people. And they always like to say that, hey, you just don't understand. Socialism is fantastic. We have the new version, 2.0, or at this point, 500.0, of socialism. And it's going to work because it works in Denmark, Norway, Sweden. They're not. Has anyone noticed? They don't get a lot of news on this. Every single one of those countries has come out, their government has actively said, we're not socialists. 
We don't believe in socialism. We don't practice socialism. This is not a socialist country. Of course, these proponents, the progressive, they know better than that government does. The people in the Dutch, the Swedes, the Norwegian, they don't know what their government is. They're socialists. I think you know what you are in your own country. Whether it's good or bad, you know what it is. But they say, oh, it's them, look at that. Well, they're telling you they're not. And in every single one of those cases, what you're looking at is socialized programs, which were funded by capitalist gains, are moving those countries forward. And they took that surplus and they gave it to the public. And in every one of those countries, once the surplus is used up, they have come back to capitalist ide the ideology and their programs for the public because they can't sustain themselves. What was it, Margaret Thatcher who said, socialism is fantastic as long as you have someone else's money to pay for it. You are the other someone else. It's your money they're coming after. And we have to look at these things real world. Yeah, go ahead. Well, and all the Scandinavian countries have like really low corporate taxes. Like nobody, nobody talks about mm -hmm. No, no, they have really high. They have high corporate taxes, they have high VAT taxes. Are you sure? Yeah. I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure Sweden has like a 20% corporate tax. I think that was. Oh. I wasn't thinking, well, again, we have to define which country. Yeah, not, not which country. Yeah. So I apologize. Yeah, You're no, right and I'm right because we're probably talking about two different countries. But go yeah. on. Yeah, like the, the ones I've heard people point to are like Sweden and Denmark. I know they have, they have pretty low corporate tax rates. Because they understand that like they still need companies to come in and create jobs. Otherwise, there's gonna be nobody paying taxes to support their programs. Yeah. Yeah. And one second, because you actually brought up something. I wanted to talk about Andrew Yang. Oh, yeah. Everybody know who Andrew Yang is? Okay. He is probably the second person that I've I've been doing political commentary for over a decade. I don't agree with a lot of people. I do not call anyone an idiot for their political ideas except for Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez and Andrew Yang. They are idiots. I don't like Pelosi. I think she does a lot of dumb things. She's not an idiot. I just don't agree with her. Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez and Andrew Yang are idiots. Andrew Yang, as I said earlier, said he says the most racist statements I've ever heard on a stage by a presidential candidate since the modern age of TV. No one, I mean, there may have been people before there were TVs that were saying really racist things. He makes Johnson look like you know he has a good run for his money. But Andrew, who loves to say that he is an economist, he's a businessman, he's smart about numbers because he's Asian, which I don't know where that connection comes from. Like that's inherent in the genes or something, which is again inherently racist. But he can't do math. Does anyone take econ uh, is taking economy uh, economics? Excuse me. Do you guys? Okay. Let me ask you a question. In basic economics, if I suddenly flood a system with money, does that make the value of that money go up or down? Goes down. Goes down. There's a great example of that, the Weimar Republic. Do you know that? Yep. Okay. For us, you guys who don't know what we're talking about, it's a basic economic principle. Flood the market with money, that money is devalued, it's worthless. The greatest example of that was the Weimar Republic back in World War I. The Germans lost. And they were and part of the armistice was that they were going to pay, especially France, all this stupid amounts of money. More money than our country could possibly generate. Which was meant to make them poor so they could never build up another army and never attack the world again. And what it created was a system where this morning I could bring in a lunchbox full of money and I could buy a loaf of bread. By the time I got off of work, I would need a wheelbarrow full of money to buy that same loaf of bread. Tomorrow, I will need two wheelbarrows. By the time I wake up, I will need two wheelbarrows full of money to buy that same loaf of bread. Because the government decided, we're gonna print money and pay them with that. You need a trillion dollars? We'll print a trillion. 
here you go, we paid you. Of course, that destroyed the economy, destroyed businesses, destroyed people's lives because they flooded the market. Andrew Yang says that he is going to pay everyone $1,000, except he is lying, he is not. I know this because Andrew Yang has admitted when he is actually asked by a reporter the question, hey, Andrew, is everyone going to get $1,000? The answer is no. He just doesn't say that on national TV. Poor people will get $1,000 or whatever government aid they're getting right now. One or the other. Rich people won't get $1,000 because he just doesn't want to give it to them. People in the middle, depending on your income, may get $1,000. By the way, he's also going to increase your taxes for everyone with a VAT tax, which is a value-added tax. So everything you buy is going to have another tax on top of it. So that he can take away money from you, even though he just gave you money, to try and help pay for his plan. You know who that hurts the most? Poor people. Because they don't have enough money to do the things they want to do. He's taking, he's giving them money and taking it away from them with interest. <coughs> and saying, hey, I'm a really nice guy. And he's causing the price of everything to go up because he has to create more money to do that. Does anyone have an idea of how much money you would have to flood the United States government with? every year to be able to pay everyone a thousand dollars like Andrew Yang says. Go ahead. I think it's three point two trillion. Three between three point one and three point two trillion dollars. Do you know how much the United States spends every year? Is that four trillion? Four point one to four point three trillion dollars every year. And puts us in debt, of course. Usually around a trillion dollars at this point, depending on how interest rates are. So he is looking at adding eighty percent more money into the system, which will depress the economy, raise taxes, hurt every single person, especially if you have to be poor. And his answer is, don't worry about it. It's okay, we're just gonna print money. You know who also agrees with that idea? Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. She wants to pay for everything she thinks of, we're gonna just print more money. Because why not, we can just print more money. What's the problem with that? She actually has a in economics. Her teachers were idiots. Or they were paid off. I don't understand which. I'm not surprised that she went from an economics degree to bartending. Not because I don't think bartenders are great people, I just don't think she could get a job as an economist. She can't do math. These things are harmful. These are the people who are saying, you are not smart enough to lead the country. You're not smart enough to make decisions for yourself. Listen to that. Isn't that terrifying? I think it is. No question. I was just going to say that I know um, the head of economics at Stony Brook University. I think it's Stephanie Kelton, and she she's like the creator of modern monetary theory, mm -hmm. which is big with Bernie Sanders and Ocasio Cortez, and which basically says you can just print as much money. So yeah. it's a big like idea that around No, it's an economic theory. It is absolutely an economic theory right now that says you can just print money, don't worry, because no one's ever gonna call. Because you can just do that, because governments can do that. But the effects, real world, always come about. Again, it's them saying, well, don't worry, we're the government, we're smarter than you are. Well, okay. And that's why they want to increase taxes. You see, we've got the promise for 20, 30 years. We're going to lower taxes. We're going to lower taxes. We finally lowered the taxes, like everyone, Republicans, Democrats, everyone said they're going to lower taxes. No one ever did. We finally did it. Lowered the corporate tax rate. The economy got stimulated. People were making money. More people are working now than almost ever before in every category you could name. And the progressive answer to that is, let's raise taxes and stop that. That shit needs to end now because people aren't poor enough. They're not relying on the government enough because you have a choice and that choice might not be the one they want and that's a problem. Because if you have a choice, you're not gonna say healthcare for everyone. I want healthcare for me. 
Because if you have a choice, you're going to say, I want to protect myself because there isn't going to be a cop on every single corner in front of every single house to protect everyone at the same moment. Because they're going to say that you don't get to vape, you don't get to have a cigarette, and then the next day, you don't get to wear shorts. You don't get to have a beard. You don't get to live. What's the difference in any of those statements? Because there isn't one. If the government can tell you you must do one thing, the government can tell you you must do anything. If you can't defend yourself from the government, nothing stops the government from abusing you. That's a reality. It's a hard truth. It's a truth that the media, social media, many politicians, many teachers don't want you to know. Because it helps you, not them. Can I ask a question? Oh yeah, a while ago. I was, I, I don't yeah, know. I pay attention. About, <laughs> yeah, I don't know much about your economic use, but I, I was wondering if you can think of anybody who's actually still suggesting the Milton Friedman ideas of monetary policy. Because the Trump side has said, you know, Fed's a bad idea, and the other side is saying just abolish it and print more money and inflate everything. So I don't know, can you think of anybody or? No, no one who's in, active in politics right now, uh, which is why we need new ideas. We need new people to come forward. We do have a diff somewhat different market because we have cell phones and technology. It's innovations. I grew up before there was ever a, a computer. We all have computers now. They're super powerful. Excuse me, personal computers. No, I'm not that old. <laughs> but personal computers. I remember the very first personal computer. 256 kilobytes. That was huge. That was powerful. I got calculators that don't work properly and have more power than that. And now we've got multiple terabytes. With all that power, yeah, you're going to have interest. You're going to have a new idea. But people like Andrew Yang say, well, I've got to protect you because no one's going to make anything anymore. That's a stupid statement. Someone is going to make stuff. Your clothes are just magically going to continue to exist. Cars are going to continue to run. Obviously, some people will continue to have the basics. People will continue to make stuff. All jobs will not be automated to death. They said the same argument when they said, we have to automate uh, most of the production lines, like for cars, most of the refrigerators, 